This is the longest border in the world, the 49th parallel separating the United States and Canada. It's over 9,000 kilometers long from coast to coast, and as far as borders go, it's a pretty harmonious one. But if we zoom into British Columbia, Canada, you will notice one strange detail. This area belongs to the United States. This is Point Roberts, a tiny US enclave beneath Greater Vancouver. It's been referred to as an American appendage growing off of Canada, a geographical oddity, and even titled Point Mistake. The only way in or out is by driving across the border, flying in on a small plane, or by chartering a private boat from the mainland. For years, Canadians have been the lifeline of the economy, crossing the border for cheap gas and parcels. Point Roberts is the third busiest border crossing along the 49th parallel, with Canadians accounting for 90% of the traffic. With a population of just over 1,000, the town swells to almost 5,000 on a summer weekend, giving businesses enough revenue to survive for the rest of the year. Half the residents carry dual citizenship and the town celebrates both national holidays. But in March of 2020, when both governments closed down their borders, residents became entirely isolated. Tonight, Canada is closing its borders because- Point Roberts, Washington in particular has been hard hit by the closure. Cut off by two international border crossings. And what had once been an arbitrary boundary became an uncrossable line. So one man brought forward an old question. Should Point Roberts become part of Canada? Canada. <laughs> this would mean a significant change to the border. So could the 49th parallel be redrawn? Why does one man want to sell this town to Canada? And what does the rest of the community feel about potentially renouncing their American address? People in Point Roberts live with the 49th parallel every day. No one could have predicted the impact the border would have on this town back when the boundary was first created. So how did it get cut off in the first place? Before Europeans colonized North America, the peninsula was cared for by the Lummi Nation, along with many other coast Salish nations. In fact, when British explorer George Vancouver walked ashore in 1792, he marveled at the engineering of six longhouses built by the Lummi Nation. And he wasn't the first European in the peninsula. The Spanish had already traveled the west coast, but he coined the name Point Roberts. Flash forward to 1846, when California was still Mexico, Alaska was still Russia, Canada had yet to exist, and the 49th parallel didn't extend beyond the Rocky Mountains until June 15th, when Britain and America signed the Treaty of Washington or the Treaty of Oregon, or the buchanan peckinham Treaty, because, well, both countries put their own titles on their copy of the treaty, so it has multiple names. You guys ever agree on anything? Anyway, this treaty extended the 49th parallel from the Rocky Mountains to the Pacific Ocean, the byproduct of which created Point Roberts, a strange little speck of American land tacked onto the bottom of what would later become Greater Vancouver. And you'd think, well, no one knew about this small piece of land, right? No one in Washington, DC, or London realized because if they did, surely they would have just given it back to Canada? Well, actually, both governments absolutely knew about Point Roberts. A handful of years before they signed the Treaty of Washington, the US government dispatched surveyor Charles Welks to map out the West Coast for the upcoming negotiations. Welks reported back that Point Roberts was a valuable location. It was rich in soil and fruit and close to the mouth of the Fraser River. Fishing was fast becoming a huge industry, boosting the economy of the Pacific Northwest and providing livelihoods to many in the area, making the location an asset. The Hudson Bay Company also ran a trading post just north of Point Roberts, and Wilkes rightfully predicted it would become a city. But not much happened for Point Roberts after they drew the 49th parallel. A mining town popped up during the Fraser River Gold Rush and quickly fizzled out. The military subsequently took over the peninsula in 1859 to battle the British for the San Juna Islands. This was called the Pig War and did actually involve a pig after one owned by the Hudson Bay Company, the de facto British presence in the area, got loose from its pen and was shot by an American farmer after it ate his crop. 
This one pig led to a whole dispute over the boundary along the coastal island. That, anyways, culminated in the final border between Canada and the United States in 1871. After the military left, a group of Icelanders squatted in the area until the US government opened the land for legal homesteading in 1908, officially making Point Roberts a normal American town, just one cut off from the rest of the country. And for many decades, this wasn't a problem for Point Roberts. Canadians and Americans crossed this section of the 49th parallel multiple times a day with only their driving license. But after 9-11, the US tightened their border control. And this signaled a big shift for the Point Roberts economy. Well, I'm a resident of Point Roberts and um, it's, it's pretty bad. We're fairly restricted in the, uh, at the border. Ever since businesses have declined 2% every year, which only worsened during COVID when residents were completely cut off from Canada and America, isolated physically, socially, and economically. There's some days we don't have a single customer. We've been disproportionately affected. It was the perfect time to discuss the future of Point Roberts and that's exactly what one man did. John Lasso is a dual American Canadian citizen and a former resident of Point Roberts for 23 years. He believes that the border is killing the economy of Point Roberts and will continue to unless this town becomes part of Canada. You can observe the effects of the economic isolation in Point Roberts by taking a drive around the point. Businesses are closed, the restaurants are closed, the golf course is bankrupt, the marina is bankrupt, the bank is gone. During the pandemic, the only grocery store in Point Roberts was on the verge of closing. And with 85% of their economy based on retail and recreation, other businesses died when the border closed. There are no doctors, dentists, pharmacies, department stores, or veterinarian clinics in Point Roberts. While they have a small medical clinic in town, the closest US hospital is in Bellingham, Washington, located 70 minutes away. Currently, Point Roberts offers education for children up to grade two, but for the rest, kids have to take an hour-long bus ride through two international borders, both ways with their passport. But according to Lasso, this wouldn't be an issue if Point Roberts became part of Canada. You get up this morning in Point Roberts, Canada. You get your kids ready for school. They either walk or take a short bus ride or you take them to school. It takes maybe five minutes. Right now, the town gets all of its portable water and electricity from Vancouver and more than half of its firefighters. Any administration like road maintenance comes from Bellingham. So if a tree falls in Point Roberts, it takes up to three days to get the workers in from the mainland. And to get any house repairs, even a fridge installed is near impossible because contractors don't want to commute from Bellingham or Blaine. The traffic alone means that only four hours of work gets done per day. All of this and more would change if Canada brought Point Roberts from the US. And it makes sense, in a way, for Point Roberts to become part of Canada. After all, half are dual citizens, so it shouldn't be hard to melt two countries into one. But the idea of buying a town isn't cheap, especially one below a sprawling population-dense metropolis like Greater Vancouver. Lesso thinks that negotiations could start at around 1 billion per square mile. And since Point Roberts is only 5 square miles, that makes a total of around $5 billion. The reason being because Point Roberts is a lucrative space in a very overcrowded, very expensive area. Vancouver is well known for its exorbitant housing crisis with skyrocketing prices and little vacancy. The average home costs just over $1 million pushing most residents out of the city or into multiple jobs. Whereas just across the border, the average house in Point Roberts costs under half of what it does in Vancouver, giving some current residents an affluent interest in Liso's proposal. I wish Canada would take it over. Our property values would go through the roof. And the thing is, for Lasso, it's not about the money. And even he admits that the cell would need environmental and residential safeguarding. It's really about providing Point Roberts with access to medical care, schools, and economic opportunities. But one man does not speak for the entire community, and some residents felt threatened by this proposal. Americans in Point Roberts are proudly American, and family ties go back all the way to 1893. 
For locals, if Greater Vancouver absorbed Point Roberts, it would mean losing this natural beauty and the charm of living in isolation, because if they wanted big city life, they could relocate to Seattle. It's a fundamental tension between the comfort of how Point Roberts is and has always been versus a competent, healthy economic future. And Lesso isn't the first person to propose that Canada should purchase Point Roberts. It's an idea that comes up every few decades. Most notably in 1850 and once again after World War II. The difference this time is that the pandemic created an unprecedented period of isolation for the residents of Point Roberts, leading to an economic crisis that they're still struggling with. I think it's the best thing for the community. And Point Roberts is not going to get better. It'll only continue to get worse. Brian Clatter, chair of Point Roberts Chamber of Commerce, doesn't believe that the US will ever sell the land. The U.S. will never sell a piece of property. They haven't sold a piece of property in their history. So that's, I think, off the table. Which means no change to the 49th parallel for the foreseeable future. But he is also deeply concerned for the future of Point Roberts, because if nothing changes, the town will keep shrinking. It's at the point where he's considering applying to both countries for economic aid. We need to get some determined focus on re-establishing a base that Point Roberts can regrow from. Border crossings are still down by 40% since COVID, and currently the town is short of at least 30 employees to staff the marketplace, golf course, and marina, a number that will jump to 70 in the summer period. We were allowed to hire Canadians, right in Ladin, next door, five miles away, on a part-time service community basis to accommodate our service industry. That was denied. Just surreptitiously, they just shut her down and did never renew it. And boy, do we need it now. Point Roberts lost almost all of its service industry when around 200 residents moved away during the pandemic. And any residents looking to return are faced with no affordable housing as the majority have been turned into Airbnbs. Not to mention almost 70% of the real estate are owned by Canadians as vacation homes. And despite John Lasso submitting his proposal to President Trump, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, the Washington governor and the Washington state senator, nothing has changed. We've had some landmark consideration by the Canadian side. I would submit more possibly than the US side. Over the pandemic, Brian Clatter has done almost 300 interviews to bring attention to the unique situation of Point Roberts. But neither the US government, Washington state, or Canada have provided any unique solutions. We do not need an economic guru to come in because they won't have a clue about Point Roberts because it's unique in North America. There is not another place in North America, Canada and the US, that has the same situation as Point Roberts. The border remains strong and withered a chokehold on economic growth. Point Roberts remains a beautiful, unique place just half an hour away from Vancouver's International Airport. Easy to access the cultural hub of cafes, food and art while still being quiet and full of wildlife. It's the closest you can get into small town life right next to the big city. But unless something changes and unique exceptions are provided for Point Roberts, the future of this isolated American enclave remains uncertain.